Last month, I ditched my iPhone 15 Pro for the S24 Ultra, and these are the best accessories that I found to be a part of my updated everyday carry. Some of the items here are on the premium end, but I've tried my hardest to find the best value for money products that I enjoy using and think are worth picking up. The first product I wanted to find for my S24 was a high quality case. I got a leather and clear case to try so that I could swap between them, and my requirement for both was that they were compatible with MagSafe. This leather one for mouse is great, and I think it's best if you're looking for a clean design, but something that It'll still be protective. The back of the case is exactly what you'd expect from a leather one, but the sides are a thick rubber. I personally prefer something like the Ondar cases where it's full leather all around, but if you're someone who drops their phone all the time, this is going to do a really good job at protecting it. It does that without being super bulky and having a great grip. It'll cost you a lot of money, I paid about $65, but you're definitely paying for the quality here. If you're looking for something cheaper though, this clear case from ESR was just over $20 and has been the one I've been using more. It shows off my model's titanium black finish quite well, though the screen protrudes out, so if you're worried about dropping it, it's worth getting a screen protector. I wanted MagSafe on both of these cases so that I could use the S24 on my car mount and desk charger, as well as these wallets from ESR. They do block the bottom camera slightly, but otherwise they're designed very well. I find that it can comfortably hold four cards along with a license, which means that most times I don't actually need to carry my full wallet because I only really need two cards. It also doubles as a kickstand, which I've gotten a lot of use out of. I won't talk about the S24 itself all too much because I I did make a full review, but I've loved the experience using Android. Out of the box, there were some quirks, but you can change almost anything to your liking, which is a huge advantage over iOS. This is an incredibly well-built device with a gorgeous screen that is made for a great daily phone. When I do carry a full wallet, the Coach zip card case has been my go-to. My wallet has always been the item I've been most picky with, but this is exactly what I wanted. A nice looking leather card holder that wasn't bulky, but still had enough room to hold seven cards. I pulled the trigger after seeing Andre feature it within a couple of videos, but since then, it's been hard to find on Amazon. It's a shame as it's incredibly well designed, so I'll try to find it on Coach's official website for you guys. There's four card slots at the front, and in the sleeve behind, room for about three more. The zip pouch has been great to carry cash when I do have it, and hold an AirTag or tile. I bought the latter so that whatever I have it in is able to be tracked with my S24. For unboxing packages, I recently picked up the Kershaw Iridium Knife, and this is another product that's always been hard for me to choose. I wanted it to have a black finish to match my dark EDC, and this delivered. The blade is silver, but on the handle there are some golden brown accents. The opening mechanism is unlike other knives I've used, but the action itself is smooth. Now next up, the laptop I'm running is the M3 MacBook Air that I picked up to review. I will be going back to the 14 inch M3 Pro as my main machine, but I was really interested in how this base model machine would handle my workflow. I'm currently doing all of my work on this machine, and with just 8GB of RAM it is limited, but not that bad. For most people, this chip is going to be more than enough but going for an older refurbished model is probably the most cost-effective option. I'll have a full impressions video out sometime soon, but the things that make daily driving this the hardest are the 60Hz screen and there only being two Thunderbolt ports. The refresh rate really isn't that bad, but still, on the desktop, things don't feel quite as fluid as with ProMotion. Having a dock though is pretty much a necessity if you want to push dual displays with it, as you'll need peripherals because the lid has to be shut. I've been using razors for a while and recently got this one from Ugreen so that I can more easily take this on the go. For me, the only downside running macOS alongside the S24 was the lack of airdrop, but with Neardrop, this issue has almost been solved. I'm able to send files from my S24 to the Mac, but have had trouble doing it the other way around. Now, because this internal drive is only 256GB, I keep all my video files on a 4TB SD SSD within this ROG enclosure. What's up? It's Editing Cole. I'm about a third of the way through the video. All this was done on the MacBook Air, so I have a little bit more to say about its performance, and it's actually ran a lot better than I expected. Although I am back on the M3 Pro right now because things started to slow down a lot. And you know, with only eight gigabytes of RAM, if you have more than just a resolve window open, things start to get really slow. Other than that though, for day-to-day -day tasks, it's really good. Along with the MacBook, I have an 11-inch iPad Pro that I keep inside this MagEasy Folio case from Pitaka. I like this one a lot because it's slim and makes propping it up easy. The iPad is definitely my least used EDC item though. All I use it for is having it alongside me while I film and then wireframe designs in GoodNotes with the Apple Pencil. Just this past week though, I bought a Kindle Paperwhite, which I'm already getting a lot more use out of. This is the 32GB Signature Edition, which is more than enough space for just books 
books, but I mostly got it so that I could also store audiobooks. While I definitely prefer reading physical books when traveling or even at home sitting in bed, it's much more convenient having this. It's great on the eyes, and regardless of how dark my room is, I can still read perfectly fine. I threw it into this leather case I found on Amazon, which for the price is really high quality. Because I have it loaded up with storage for audiobooks, having AirPods in the everyday carry is essential. I find using these with both the Kindle and S24 completely fine. Most of the time, they'll auto-connect to the right device, and really the only downside is they won't auto-pause when you take one of them out. I haven't noticed any downgrade in audio quality from iOS, but for me, I don't care all that much about how these sound, because most of the time I wear them, I'm at the gym. I have them stored in this leather case from Ondar that keeps them protected and looking great. When I travel next week, most of these items will be thrown into this wander sling from TomTalk, who are sponsoring this video. I'm happy to be working with them again, as I use and have personally bought quite a few products from them that I use daily. Within this blue interior, there's a lot of storage for items, and in this main compartment is where I keep my Steam Deck OLED. TomTalk's hard shell case is really nice to use with it, as it's very slim and keeps it protected without requiring much space to be taken up. In the pocket behind, I slip my Kindle and pocket journal inside. In the opposite compartment, I have a tile so that I can track it, and this 100 watt cable from Anchor that I use for every device. In the front outside pocket is where I'll slip my phone and full wallet, and then there's a final zip pouch on the back side that you can throw whatever you want in, but this is where I keep my keys. The nylon material of this sling is water resistant and feels very well built. These buckles have 120 degree rotation, so that if you ever need to switch shoulders, it's easy and comfortable. The locking mechanism that TomTalk uses makes it easy to remove them if you want to carry it instead with the handle at top. Most of my daily carry can fit in the sling, but for larger items, I have their laptop bag, which for now, I'm of course using to carry my M3 Air, but this has never had a problem fitting a 16-inch MacBook. This bag has two front zip pockets, plus a main compartment with an additional two that for your day-to-day -day EDC is perfect. In the outside water bottle holder, I have my Lark bottle, and then inside, most of the time, I just throw in a hat in case I ever need one. On my wrist at all times, I wear this automatic watch from Orient, which is my second diver from them. I'm in love with this all-black design and for the price, just about $200, it's an incredible value. If you're looking to pick up your first watch, this one, or really anything from Orient is a great choice. The lightweight build means I don't notice it weighing down my wrist, so I can go throughout my entire day, aside from sleeping, with it on. The black band has held up really well and hides any scratches that have built up. Until I spend a few grand on a nicer diver, this Orient is going to be my go-to. Now, this leather cue organizer from Orbikey has been great to me, and if you've been following the channel for a bit, you would have seen this featured in my last few EDC videos. It's held up incredibly well and looks great. It keeps my keys, along with this Chipolo tracker, neat within a slim profile. So these have been all of my everyday carry items that I've had alongside my S24 Ultra. I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, go and watch my full review of the phone. Take care.